Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Piper Labs. Just a, a, a quick video um, today talking about biotic and abiotic factors in ecosystems. Okay, so in this video we're going to um, do a bit of uh, definitions kind of recap um, about what we mean when we use these labels of biotic and abiotic factors. And then we're going to look at some examples or kind of list out um, what are some different factors or aspects of an ecosystem that might fall into each category. Okay, so let's let's kind of kick off. All right, so as you might be able to tell from the, the, the spelling or the kind of the wording um, in these two words, that they are closely related. Okay, so when we're going to think about biotic, um, so that we, we're thinking about relating uh, to life, that is bio, like in biology, okay, or you know, the, um, or biography, if we wanted to think in a non-scientific kind of way. So relating to life, okay. And so when in Greek, which these words originally come from Greek, when we use the letter A in front of something, it means the opposite, okay. Um, so not relating to life, okay. That is a biotic. So the opposite of, of biotic. Okay, we have symmetry and we have asymmetry. We've got biotic and abiotic. Okay, so um, that we that, that's um, essentially what we're going to be considering when we're looking at these these two um, aspects of an ecosystem. Okay, so we've got an ecosystem at the bigger level, and then we've got things that are uh, biotic factors, and then we've got our abiotic factors. Okay, so our biotic factors relate to our organisms, our range of different living things in that ecosystem. So we might have things to do with um, population size. Um, we're looking at um, aspects of, say, feeding relationships. Um, we're looking at um, interactions between different species and also different members of the same species, you know, whether we're looking at um, a pride of lions and, or, or looking at kind of, um, yeah, interactions between, you know, herbivores and carnivores and producers and consumers and decomposers, um, whether we're looking at um, ways that, that uh, things like competition, okay, um, predator-prey relationships. So they're all things that um, specifically relate to the living parts of, or the, the, the living sections of, our ecosystem. So when we're thinking about the abiotic factors now, we're thinking about the physical environment. Okay, so we've, you know, when we're thinking about an ecosystem, we're thinking about a community of organisms and they're interacting with their physical environment. And so there's aspects of that environment that we're considering here. So maybe it's temperature. Uh, maybe it's the amount of light. Um, maybe that's, you know, that, that we're thinking about in terms of sunlight, you know, passing through the trees or the sunlight that penetrates through the upper layers of the ocean or, you know, the things that grow under the, the, you know, the canopy of the rainforest and so on. Um, we're thinking about aspects like wind, you know, so wind speed direction. And speed and direction is going to affect what sort of living things can grow or, you know, will be found in particular areas. Um, we're thinking about things like salinity, so that is uh, relating to the amount of salt um, in the environment. You know, salt water versus fresh water versus brackish water, which is kind of the combination of the two. Um, you know, so then um, we're looking at um, pH, that is relates relating to the acidity of the soil or of the oceans, um, or those sorts of things, will, again, will affect what living things will be found there. Um, they're just a couple of, of quick examples, um, far from an, ex an exhaustive or extensive list, but just showing you that in an ecosystem that we can, we think about the two different aspects to it, we think about biotic factors and we think about abiotic factors. Now the reason that we care is that for us as um, ecologists, as scientists studying ecosystems, we want to be able to, uh, to measure, observe doc and document um, these factors in the environment, in the ecosystem. You know, we want to be able to to measure things like population size and um, to observe feeding relationships in action. What sort of interactions are there? You know, how are different species competing or kind of 
um, uh, collaborating together with one another? Are they benefiting? You know, uh, do we see some? Uh, yeah. So, what sort of different relationships do we see? We want to be able to, you know, to count up how many different species there are in a particular area. You know, how does the population size change over time? Um, how does is that affected by the seasons or over the course of a given year or over multi-year cycles or whatever? And then we also want to be able to document, okay, well, what's the environment like, you know, um, in terms of its geography, in terms of its location, in terms of its altitude, it's, you know, all of these different aspects um, for us to be able to measure and document about of an environment. Um, also, it particularly um, is really useful for us when we're thinking about changes to an ecosystem, um, analyzing changes or things that impact on the biotic and abiotic aspects of an ecosystem. So, you know, if we chop down a whole bunch of trees, how does that affect what populations exist there? How does it affect the environment of well, we all of a sudden get a lot more sunlight and a lot less shade and habitat? Um, you know, how is that going to affect what wind that you see and therefore, you know, does that blow all the topsoil away and, and so on? Okay, I, I, I digress. But um, that, that's part of the reason that we're interested in this situation is that um, for us as ecologists, being able to document and observe these um, it provides us very useful information on the health of an ecosystem. Alright, thanks very much for watching. Bye for now, and see you next time.